In the back streets of architecture, I was always chasing questions no one seemed to have a clear answer for. One of those questions was, what's the secret behind long-lasting facades? I discovered pieces of this puzzle hidden amongst old and new buildings through observation, experience and attention to detail. Eventually I arrived at a secret rarely spoken of. Now I want to share this secret with you, along with images I've collected over the years. A secret that can deepen and enrich your perspective on facade design. Bear with me. In our cities, sometimes we come across buildings that, even after many years, still appear clean and intact. On the other hand, we see buildings that, though not very old, already look worn out and filthy. Signs of time passing on a building's face, if harmless, can even add charm and character. But when these signs threaten the building's structure and appearance, they must be identified and addressed. Most people think that a building's facade wears out due to moisture, dust or pollution from traffic and industry. But that's only part of the story. There are hidden factors behind damaged and dirty facades. Things that may go unnoticed, but have a significant and decisive impact on a building's lifespan. Because in the world of architecture, sometimes it's the smallest details that ensure the greatest endurance. Caring for a facade's integrity isn't something to be addressed only after the building is complete. The true secret to a building's longevity lies in paying attention to three key stages. Design, construction, and post-construction. In the design stage, the first thing a designer must know is that the more a surface tilts upward toward the sky, the more exposed it becomes to dust, to grime, and even water infiltration. This is where Frank Gehry refers to gravity as a limitation in his design process. Because in his freeform and curvilinear buildings, some surfaces tilt skyward, becoming more prone to trapping dust and moisture. Another key point in facade design is the path of rainwater runoff. If the architect doesn't carefully plan for it, gravity will do its job and water will find its own way. The pollution that accumulates over time on flat surfaces will then be washed down the facade or absorbed into the walls, distorting and damaging the appearance.
As shown here, drainage was considered, but what happens to the water after it exits this point was overlooked. Always remember, horizontal surfaces are prone to accumulating dust and debris. Sometimes they even become perching spots for birds, which adds even more grime to the facade. All horizontal surfaces must be designed to guide surface water properly. And if needed, copings and drip edges should be included. Copings prevent rain or snow from seeping into the wall's core, while drip edges help divert runoff, carrying dust and pollutants away from the building surface. Take note, using a capping alone without a drip edge is not enough to keep the facade clean. Here we see examples where the absence of both have led to damage and higher maintenance costs. Water infiltration into walls can trigger chemical reactions in materials and create a damp environment where moss and plants can grow, jeopardising both beauty and safety. The growth of roots inside walls threatens the facade structure, leading to cracks and disintegration. Also, when water dripping from a coping hits a visible part of the facade, it can cause stains. Clearly visible here, and here. When it comes to water flowing over surfaces, the material plays a crucial role. Along a wall's path, the more permeable, rough, porous, or groove the material is, the more likely it is to trap pollutants. And on upward facing surfaces, the smaller the materials and the more joints between them, the more vulnerable and high maintenance the facade becomes. An architect must ensure that selected materials won't deform, crack, fade or peel under direct sun heavy rain or snow. The second stage is construction. Here, after confirming the accuracy of the design details, a qualified contractor and skilled execution team must be chosen. Even the type of contract can affect execution quality. Both the supervising body and contractor must ensure that design details are implemented precisely. 
Look at these metal cappings. Poor installation and missing drip edges rendered them ineffective and increased maintenance costs. Even the joints between coping pieces, if not filled flush and leveled, can channel rainwater over the facade, causing visible staining and damage. A building once constructed becomes a physical body, one that needs care to sustain its life. The third stage, post-construction, includes two key elements, regular inspections and maintenance or cleaning. Since inspections require technical and safety expertise, it's best to entrust this task to specialised companies, ones that follow regulations and ensure safe and accurate assessments. For larger buildings, hotels, schools, hospitals or universities, a maintenance management system must be in place. This system should define all activities needed to preserve the facade and plan for the necessary budget. As for repairs and cleaning, you must ensure the facade is free of dust, soot, moisture, cracks, weeds or any element that threatens its appearance and integrity. Naturally, the more care is taken in choosing materials and managing rainwater runoff during design and construction, the lower the long-term cleaning and repair costs will be. But if the principles discussed in this video are ignored at any of the three stages, design, construction or maintenance, you should expect the building to become dirty, deteriorated or unusable sooner than expected, imposing high repair costs on its owners. The insights shared in this video can help you make informed technical decisions in facade design and create facades that are not just beautiful, but lasting and durable. I've included links below for different types of copings and their details.